has been nothing short of fascinating. Okay? Former, former uh, professor of medicine and cellular biology at University of Madison, spent time at Stanford as well. So what Bruce Lipton talked about is he talked about how the concept of how perception turns into belief, which then turns into the physical manifestation of what's going on in your body right now, which is your biology, the biology of what's going inside, on inside your body. So perception, stick with me now, perception is the receiving of information from the environment through your senses. Can everyone get that? How you're seeing me right now, you're perceiving what, what I look like, what the background looks like. You're perceiving that. That's your perception. You have a belief about what you think about how that looks. And then that turns into neuropeptides that shower your cells and tell your cells what you're looking at and how you feel about it. So if, if, you're, if you're at all happy about what you've heard about the brain so far, your cells are like, hey, your neuropeptide is like, hey, he's liking it. She's happy about this. This is good stuff. We're in a, we're in a positive environment right now because you're thinking, you're, you're processing it. You're, 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 it's causing you to think. So this is how it works. Belief is what you think of the information based on what you've been taught growing up and through your past experiences. That's how you build beliefs. And then the biology is the physical expression of your body once the information is received and then passed through your belief system. So once you perceive the information, it then turns into a belief, and your body is then told what you believe about the situation, and that turns into your biology. This is a major part of where disease comes from. Is your negative thoughts about life and negative thoughts about yourself will immediately turn into negative biological processes, meaning, i.e., disease. There is no disconnect there anymore. There is no lack of understanding in that process. And there is tons of scientific research and experts to back that up. So the process of perception to belief to biology is called the HPA axis. Axis. Okay? Before we hit the HPA axis, why don't we get up and take our breaths? I'm seeing some yawns here. And actually, I'm very encouraged to see yawns because uh, there's research that just came out showing that yawning is actually to cool down the brain. So it means that you're thinking. The smoke's starting to roll out of your ears. All right, take in some deep breaths for me. Breathe from your belly, not your chest. Get some oxygen. Oxygen in your blood. One last breath and take a seat. All right. So the HPA axis you are now going to learn the physiological process of what happens when you take in information, lock it in with a belief, and then send the message to the rest of your body so your body can act and adapt to what's going on outside. The H in HPA, the H is the hypothalamus. Okay? It's a little, it's a little, little finger, fingernail-sized gland in your brain at the base of the brain in the limbic system, so that's where the hypothalamus is. Can you see, all see that? See how tiny that thing is? And it sits right behind your conscious processor, your forebrain, where all of your thinking and all of your processing and emotions are going on. So it's in the limbic system. It occupies the sidewalls and floor of the third ventricle situated below the sides of the thalamus and above the pituitary gland and it consists of two halves. So right behind your, your forebrain is where that hypothalamus is. So you know what the hypothalamus is. It is crucially involved in the regulation of the endocrine glands, which is where your hormones are produced, 
and the autonomic nervous system. So it also runs all those chemical interactions that need to happen to keep your heart running, keep your kidneys running, keep your blood pumping, all of that stuff that needs to happen. Your hypothalamus has, has work in the conscious brain and the subconscious brain, that tiny little organ. Absolutely fascinating. It's implicated in the control of temperature, heart rate, blood pressure, hunger, thirst, sexual arousal, predator aggression, and fight or flight response. Anyone ever gotten frightened of something and felt stuff just run through their body? Your body just completely seizes up. You can literally feel every muscle just tense. Your hypothalamus is what causes that chain reaction to happen. And it happens in literally a split second. Okay? So that's the H. That is where your perception comes in. Your perception is accepted into your body with the hypothalamus. Okay? P, the pituitary gland. The pituitary gland is known as the master gland. It is responsible for organizing the body's 50 trillion cells to deal with any impending threats. All of your hormones are regulated by the pituitary gland. Okay? This is when your hypothalamus gets the information in. This is the H. It then sends the message to the pituitary gland of what you believe and what emotion you're feeling. And your pituitary gland then sends out the specific messages to the different glands and cells to produce the exact response that needs to happen in whatever situation you're going through. Whether you're having a situation where you're exhilarated, you're having fun, maybe you're on a roller coaster or something, or, or maybe you're relaxing, and maybe having fun isn't being on a roller coaster for a lot of you, but maybe you're relaxing. Your pituitary gland is organizing all of the chemical release to make sure that you're feeling that way. And it's organizing all your cells to be relaxed. Or, on the flip side, if you're stressed out, if you're talking negatively, if you're in fear all the time, your pituitary gland is also sending out the message to all of your cells and organizing the hormones for you to be in fear all the time. So it's meant to be good, but it definitely can begin to work against you. The adrenal glands, and this is where the pituitary is right there, right behind the hypothalamus. So the adrenal glands are a pair of small endocrine glands situated on top of the kidneys. And they produce many steroids that regulate the blood, salt, and water balance and are concerned with the metabolism of all your food and the secretion of hormones, adrenaline and noradrenaline. So there are more than 30 adrenal hormones and all are synthesized from cholesterol by cortical cells that have been stimulated by the adrenal cortico corticopic hormone. Where are those synthesized from? What are they synthesized from? Cholesterol? Hmm. Cholesterol isn't such a bad guy after all, is it? You cannot have hormones in your bodies, ladies and gentlemen, unless you have adequate cholesterol to synthesize them with. Cholesterol is not a bad substance. It's necessary for any function to happen in the body, any at all. Okay? One thing I, I think you may find interesting, when it comes to the adrenal glands, the same stress hormones that the adrenal glands regulate and produce are also stress hormones that are used to stop the immune system from rejecting an organ transplant. Hold on now, what does that mean? It means that the hormones that the adrenal system can pump out can absolutely squash your immune system as well. So what happens is, is if you perceive that there is stress, if you're in fear, or if you're in a negative state, your adrenal glands will be pumping out the same type of hormones 
that suppress the immune system enough for you to accept someone else's organ. That is a very strong suppression of the immune system, ladies and gentlemen. And it's important for you to know, because this is what we're going to go into now, is that your thoughts and beliefs regulate your immunity as well through this very axis that we just talked about, through that same process. So let's talk about stress, depression, and negative thoughts. Carolyn Leaf is a PhD who has, who has become a very well known. She's written a couple books. The way that she describes it is that we can easily track and sequence the reactions in the body through toxic thoughts. And they basically carve a path of destruction with all of with, with the actions and, and the chain reactions and the physiological process that we just talked about. Stress, depression, and negative thoughts all cause that. So if you have a negative or unsupportive belief in your mind, one thing is very, very important before we go any further. Just because you believe that something is negative, stressful, or that you should be afraid of it doesn't mean that your belief is true. You may be telling yourself every day that you've got stuff to worry about that doesn't need to be worried about. You may be negative with yourself every day, that, and there's no reason to be. And you may be fearful of things that absolutely, 100%, you have nothing to be afraid of. But because you believe it to be true, you are carving a path of destruction through your body with your thoughts that someone else who may be living in the same type of, of life and experiencing the same type of challenges accepts it differently, perceives it differently, and believes they are okay, and their body is not getting nearly the type of reaction as yours is. This is, begins the big differentiator in how you today can begin to take over the absolute main area of your health, which is your thoughts. This is why this is the most important lesson in this entire course. Because if you begin to take over your thoughts and you move forward with the belief that there is nothing to be afraid of, you're safe. That nothing deserves enough attention to get you stressed. Things will work out. You can get through it. And that there is absolutely no reason to be negative about anything because you could just turn the same situation over, say something positive about it, and move on. It doesn't mean you're ignoring it. You're just accepting the situation differently. Literally, by making that choice, you will immediately change the tangible physiological climate in your body to a very supportive and a very progressive one which can heal disease, it can produce energy, and it, start, it can start correcting problems that you've had for a long, long time that you didn't realize thoughts were creating. That's how powerful this is.